tuned because this is about to get hot. What is going on, everyone? I'm Ty Smith, Modern Renaissance Man. Ty Smith, not Todd. <laughs> And I'm about to do a reaction video here. If it's your first time visiting my channel, let me say welcome. Let me also say thank you for checking me out. But if you plan on subscribing to my channel, do yourself a favor and me. Don't do it just yet. Get an idea of who I am, what I'm about, what my beliefs are before you subscribe to me, if you would, please. Okay? I really appreciate it if you did it that way. And how do you do that? Go to my channel. Click on the words playlist. When you click on playlist, it's going to bring up a bunch of different video topics. You're going to see a variety of things. Church slash God topics, home entertainment videos, marriage, relationship, advice videos, advice to subscribers, fitness, health, comedy. There's a lot of things on there, all right? I want you to do that to get an idea of who I am and what this channel is about before subscribing, if you would, please. And also, if you want to um, support me in what I do, you can purchase a t-shirt. The link is down there in the description. If you want to donate to the cause and all that and different things that I do, you will see that you can also donate to my patron channel or you can donate to PayPal directly. We're doing great things here. And uh, let's go ahead and go into this next video. All right. So um, hope you all are doing good today. Today, I'm going to be changing out some uh, brake pads on uh, our, let me get more lighting, on our 2008 Nissan Quest. So um, this is going to be like a DIY video for those that want to know how to do it. So. I guess y'all can stay tuned so I can show you how I change out brake pads, okay? And I think pretty much what you're going to need in here is like a socket wrench set, whatever, and uh, a C-clamp, definitely a jack with the jack stands for protection, and uh, it's going to be that simple, so stay tuned. All right, so you guys can see here that I have a jack right here with two jack stands underneath the frame. I know I'm being a little shaky with the camera, but it's just showing you the, uh, the brakes right there, the caliper you see right there. But always make sure that you have jack stands. Okay, so as you can see right here, that right there, that bolt right there is what we're going to be taking off right there. And on my back brakes, I know I can just swing that off. So, yep, I'm going to put this on here like so. And sometimes they're on there pretty tough, so you might need to use something like a hammer, which I'll demonstrate that to you guys a little later. You want to make sure to always you set this to where if you're taking it off, you know, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So set the socket wrench to where it's going to be rotating, you know, to, to the left, as you saw me demonstrate right there to the left. And actually, I think I might have done this actually the wrong way. Yeah, I did. So I'm going to flip that around and again, make sure it's going to be rotating to your left no matter what before you put it on there. And yep, there you go. Just unscrewing that bolt out of there. And it gets to a certain point to where the, it ends on the threads and you can just slide it out. So once you break it a little bit, you can just go ahead and just kind of screw that out by hand. Or you can just keep on using the socket wrench. And as you can see right here, once it gets out of the threads. La 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 la. Okay, yeah. You can just slide it right on out. Like so. Yep. See, usually my back brakes, this whole piece can rotate down. But since the brake line is right there, it's not allowing, I can either take that clip off or I can just go ahead and take the bottom screw off. But sometimes you can take that clip off, which I'm not going to do that though. But there is the brake pads right there. And like I said, my back brakes, I can just lower down because the brake line is longer than the ones in the front. Okay. So let's see here. Now I'm showing you guys from this view right here, the bottom, bottom bolt right there. Same thing, you see me, I'm putting it on here. And I think this is gonna be a little bit uh, weird though. I'm trying to hit it with I'm trying to hit it with my hand right here to kind of tap it to kind of break it loose a little bit, but as you can see, that's not working too well. Let's keep on popping off, which I should know better to get it on there straight than what I have been. But like I said, there's a little technique you can use where you can tip the end of it with a hammer to kind of help it. Now I'm just gonna get it off right here, so bear with me i'm going to put this back up here to use that as an anchor so i can break that one loose down there which as you're going to see it's not going to be too successful you guys like when i don't edit my videos too much so you can see the real mishaps and all that of videos like this as you can see i'm still trying to do it with my hand just trying to give it some nice little taps but i need something a little bit more heavy and sturdy which will be 
putting it on the hammer. Some of y'all are not gonna get that. So, okay. All right, so I'm back. Ta-da! And I tapped it with a hammer, guys. I think I'm gonna show you on the other side, too. I tapped it with a hammer to break this, uh, this one loose right here. And I'm just using my socket wrench just to keep on, you know, uh, loosening it up. And when I, like I said again, once the threads are out, <clears throat> I better just slide the bolt out. It only goes so far, so it has a little grease and oil on it. That's why I got these gloves on right here. You can use, you know, your basic gloves. You can get at, you know, any store, Walgreens. Ones that might not have no latex or whatever on in case you're allergic to it, so be mindful of that. Again, I'm just unthreading that bolt, pulling it out right there. I'm gonna pull the top one off too. But, so anyway, I'm gonna show you guys from this view right here. The top bolt is still in there, and like I showed you, like I was talking about, I'm sorry, once I pulled the bottom one out, the top one was anchoring it a little bit to kind of help me break it loose. So now I'm just gonna finish getting the threads to pop out of this one right here and i'm going to just slide it out slide it out there we go all right now i'm gonna just take the whole caliper off and i'm just gonna rest it on the inside just like that see now let's see these brakes there's the brake pads right there you can see it's making a squealing sound and yeah, those are pretty low. It was time. The meat is almost going on that. That's what I call the brake pads. I call it the padding the meat. Some mechanics understand that little piece right there I just pointed out, that's a sensor. But not really like a sensor like you think. That right there, you see it? Let me see. Okay. Focus, focus. Yeah, there we go. That right there, it will rub up against the rotors right here. And that's what gives you that when you're stopping. So the squealing is just like a forewarning. And when it gets to the point to where it's grinding and you hear like a that means that sucker is like metal to metal. And that is no bueno. That is not good at all. So as you can see, it's still a little bit of meat left on them, but it's definitely time to change it. And then same way with the other one, you can see that the sensor on there. Yep, see that little piece right there? You can see that it's, it's worn down. It started rubbing up against the rotors, which gave you that squeaky sound. That lets you know right there that it's time to change the brakes once you start hearing that rub up against that. This is the driver side right here. And this is a technique I was going to say I was going to show you guys a little bit. See that? I'm taking the hammer and I'm going to hit the end. The end of the socket wrench. Here we go. Let me focus. So I got it on there nice and tight. Holding it in good. I'm going to just tap that top part like that just to break that loose. See? Nice little taps. It's better than my hand, won't y'all say? There we go. Just work that right on off of that. Okay, so I am back. Here are the new brake pads. I got a lifetime on these, and as you can see, that's a little piece I showed you guys earlier that had the sensor on it. Look how much more brake padding is on here. Look at that. That's a lot of meat right there. So that just goes to show you how worn down those brakes were now i got these separated to where i want a sensor on one with a normal brake pad on the other one so there they are the new brake pads lifetime all you do is take them out of zone and trade them in now the way that these brake pads go in there as you can see i got one that's a regular one and i got one that actually has a little sensor on it but it slides right in like so but I think I'm going to show you guys a nice little demonstration of how you can put it in there. Give me one second here to kind of make some adjustments, but it's easy. Just pretty much pop it up in these little slots right there and just kind of push it right on in. It fits right in. Easy peasy. Just like that. Same thing with the other side. Put them up in the little correct slots. Let me kind of get a little good look in here, make sure I got it in there right. So I've done this before, but what I want to do is I'm going to show you guys um how you can properly put that in there the right way to make it a little easier so i might just reverse this and go back and show you guys what i'm talking about especially if it's your first time doing a break it's really really easy to do just taking your time with it there you go see the brake pads in there but you, i put that part in there first here i'm gonna show you what i'm talking about see that you just 
yep, that piece right there, make it go inside first. What did, whoops, hold on. <laughs> Trying to do the camera and the one hand at the same time. So there we go, this might give you guys a nice little view here. Okay. Come on camera. All right, I think that's a good view. So see how I put that in there? Put it up in there first and the bottom part, slide it in. Yep, just like that. Push the rotor back against the hub. Make sure they're on there good. Now here comes the tricky part. 